Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we begin to look at the week that was, we can see that although it was a blase week, all three major indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and S&P 500, all fell. And somewhat, you know, uh, a, a good little drop there. The Dow over 300 for the week, and the NASDAQ over 100, and the S&P nearly 50 points for the week. And what this price action did is basically bring the NASDAQ and S&P 500 to being down for the year, uh, with the Dow still being up just about 2%. And as we said, it was pretty much a blase week. Uh, it was the worst week in about a month. Uh, we really didn't have any leadership. Um, and the S&P 500 continues to struggle with the 1220, but we'll look at that uh, when we pull up the charts. You know, we did have some stabilization of the debt for Spain and Italy, and that brought some strength to the euro. But it it that the leadership of that kind of failed, especially here on Friday. There was really no corporate news, or really no economic news that really drove the market this week. And keep in mind, as we look at next week, with the uh, the holiday of Thanksgiving here in the states, um, you know we continue to have the question of what's going to be a catalyst. Now we have deer for earnings, not going to move the market. Uh, our final uh, GDP might have something in there. Maybe FOC minutes have something in there. Um, you can see the market is closed on Thursday, and of course there is that early, we close early on Friday. Um, so, uh, you know, we have some potential, GDP, FOMC, Consumer Center, we have some, some potentials, but the question is, who's going to be around to even act on uh, some of the news, you know, uh, especially here on Wednesday? Um, so, uh, you know, we may continue to search for that catalyst, uh, but again, we're going to see the volume begin to get lighter. We're going to see some of the bigger traders uh, step to the side and be begin to wait for 2012 to reinvest their money. What's going to be our catalyst? We are looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart. And what we are basically seeing is that resistance that we talked about. Ultimately, we have the 1300 that we weren't ever to break here. Another retest here. And then now, as we come down here to the 1250 range, we're seeing that now we're struggling. And we're actually technically putting in lower highs here. Here's our 1300. Here's our 1275. Now we're looking at 1260 uh, ish. And, and then we're moving lower. So, what's going to be the key here is if 1200 will now act as support, continue to act as support, so that this new range that the market is in since uh, November, we have gone sideways here. For the entire month of November, we have the great month of October, and then we have the sideways action of November. Um, so, and you, you know, again, what's going to be our catalyst? With no catalyst, this is what we're going to get—a little up and down. You know, so will buyers continue to find value at twelve hundred, defend this level, and move us higher? Or if they don't find value, well, then that gives us potential to come back into this range, which we were in for the month of uh, September. So it's going to be interesting. We can see that our indicators are heading down. We're getting down closer. We're, we're kind of in the middle. We're not down at oversold yet. We're hanging out in the middle. As we zoom out to our weekly, uh, we can see, again, that test of 1300. And now we're pulling back. 
and we'll see here a nice big red candle as we talked about for this week. Uh, again, we say it was the largest drop in about a month. So you can see there. Um, so there's 1,200. Are, are we going to uh, uh, defend that again? Of course, there's our 200 on a weekly also. Or right, in the case here, um, MACD never really got out of uh, oversold. And now we're starting to head down here on a weekly. So um, you, you might say that our weekly is a little bit more bearish. We'll go all the way out here to monthly. And we can begin to see, here's our inside bar for September, um, nice October. Now we're putting in another inside bar. So again, definitely, if we break 1,200, it does feel like we'll go back into this body from October. Um, but uh, and we can see that our, our monthly definitely have lower uh, to go, both hanging out in the middle of the range also. So... Our indicators basically are showing us that we're in the middle of a range. They're, they're reinform, uh, confirming the the blase month of November, and you know again we're not really sure what could be our catalyst here as we have come to the end of 2011 with uh, moving us one way or another out of this range. Now we'll come over here to the Nasdaq, and again we can also see the range. Now what's interesting on the Nasdaq is right here on Thursday we we kind of violated so here's our range for November here's our range and then on Thursday we broke that range and um, we're coming a little bit lower so that's gonna be interesting and of course we can see that right about 2500 is our next true support range so uh, we had to hope that this will hold up but we did break out of our range here and so we're interested to see if the Nasdaq leads us lower our indicators are still in the middle here on a daily Zooming out to the weekly, uh, we can see, uh, well, we kind of see three moves down here. And again, we can see that break on the weekly. So our NASDAQ is, is, uh, uh, is showing a little bit more weakness. Indicator is still in the middle, but you can see there's trying to head, head lower there. And we'll go one more time out to our monthly. And uh, you can see we're putting in an inverted hammer now here on a monthly for November, which is also weak. So um, NASDAQ is a little bit weaker than S&P 500. Even though we're in the middle of the range, uh, we did see a little break there on Thursday for the NASDAQ up, out of that range to the downside. OK, as we begin to look at our market leaders, uh, we're starting off here with Apple. You can see on, on the uh, one hour time frame, they really try to defend. Uh, uh, 375, but we, we eventually broke through. And the reason I bring that up is as we look at our range that we're in, we finally broke through 82, came out, retested the uh, 20 and 50 moving average, and we have a sort of what uh, Dave Elliott would call ice hole failure where we're making new lows. And you would have to think, through it, you know, uh, as this begins to look bearish, that we're going to come down here and test the 200 and this 365. Uh, support areas, so that's you know we're gonna have to go bearish on Apple. We'll move over here to Amazon. Again, look at our hourly uh, profile and just just a fall off here. Um, zooming in here, you can see the range that we're in, and now we broke through that, and basically are are, are retesting the gap down from here, which is uh, the earnings, uh, and that's basically where we stop. So uh, if we break below 196 here, certainly have to look forward to come down here and test 190, uh, if not 186. But definitely, if it breaks 190, uh, I'm sorry, if it breaks 196, definitely need to look at it coming down six dollars and retesting this support area. Um, so Amazon definitely going to go with weak. You know how much we like to trade in the direction of the trend, so that's why I'm focusing on these to the downside. So if the trend is down right now. But keep in mind, of course, the market is consolidating. Now, Google had its earnings, and it's holding up uh, st stronger than others. Although we had a nice little push down here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but we're holding up here at uh, 600, just below it at 595. We got the 20 moving average up here, um, and you can kind of see we've got some more support here at 580, which will be the 50 moving average uh, eventually. So I would say if we break the low of Friday. Which is around 593. Uh, I would say look for us to come back down and test the 
the basing of this gap up, which is around 580. Um, what about Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs had our, uh, you know, enjoyed in that November, I'm sorry, October move up, and now it's giving it all back here in November. Remember, financials lead the, the S&P 500, and that's what we're seeing. So we'll have to watch this 8970 range here, which is uh, kind of where we based here in October. Um, with this basically five dollar wick here, um, and and, and kind of see where we go from there. We do see on the market profile a little basing here with our point of control at ninety two, uh, but definitely we would have to say Goldman Sachs down. So we have Apple down, Amazon down, Google sideways, and now Goldman Sachs uh, down. So a lot of our leaders right now are saying down. Um, here we are with IBM, and here we're kind of having a sending wedge. Going a little bit closer, um, definitely a side. We could go in with sideways. I could probably draw in a line right here at 181 for this range. Um, but there's a lot of choppiness here. Ultimately, the 50 moving average is probably your support here. So I would definitely come say all the way down here to 181 before I would say we're breaking this uptrend that we've been in. But definitely um, some sideways action here, even including October. So uh, this one, IBM, I would say sideways. Moving on to Intel. Uh, Intel uh, certainly participated in the October move, but it even started here in September. Um, and our earnings moved it. And then now we're in, in another range here. Going a little bit closer. You can see the range. Uh, certainly, if we break 24, probably going to come down here and test 2350. Um, but and this is something I wouldn't be trading right now, but as a leader, uh, Intel. I would definitely say sideways. So um, we're, we're half and half right now, sideways and and down. Uh, moving on to uh, Mastercard, and we can initially see that this is probably going to be pretty good. Definitely moving up. A lot of consolidation here, though. So if we break where we are right now, which is uh, three fifty five, we break below that, we're probably going to enter that consolidation that we saw before. So that's definitely something to watch. You can see two wicks here coming down and, and buyers saying there is value here at 355 at the 20 moving average. If we break here, definitely look for a run down here at least to 342 and then probably lower if we're going to really enter the range that it used to be in. So definitely something to watch here below 355. But sideways for MasterCard. Um, Netflix. Netflix reminds me of Crocs because Crocs, if anybody remembers Crocs years ago, Crocs shot up out of the gates and then fell hard and now here's Netflix falling hard. Starting a base a little bit though. Um, so we're definitely going to have to watch 74. If we break 74, I mean we're going to be making new lows in the short term um, and the 20 moving average continues to be resistant. So definitely want to be selling this 20 moving average until proven wrong. So that's uh, sideways to down on Netflix. And finally, we'll go to Priceline. And Priceline, you can see this really big range uh, that it uh, continues to make here between 450 and 560. I mean, about a 100 point range. Um, so as we zoom in and take a closer look of that range, uh, and we'll go in even more. We basically see that if we break 490, we're probably going to come back and test the bottom of this range. So a break of 490, uh, testing the bottom of this range sideways for right now, and we'll see what happens from there. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of our market sentiment leaders. The first one we're going to look at is a dollar. We know that there's that inverse relationship with the market. September, great. October, weak. And now November, we're getting a little push up here. So, uh, and with that push up, we're breaking out of the range that it was in and moving up. And therefore, uh, you can see why the stock market fell back a little bit here at towards the end of the week because the dollar is showing a little bit of strength. So the dollar is showing a little bit of strength. Um, you know, we had the resistance up here at 79. Uh, if we look over here where we based a little bit, it's kind of where we're falling right now. So. 
we'll see what happens with the dollar. Um, uh, not ready to go really e either direction with it, but um, the dollar is definitely showing a little strength. What about gold? Gold actually pulled back a little bit on us this week. Um, we see our move here. We see our sideways action. We can see our sideways action, and now we broke 1750, coming down, holding up, putting a doji in at the uh, 50 million average. Look at these two wicks sitting right here. So a break of 1710 will probably bring us down to 1680. And finally, crude oil. Finally, this great chart that crude oil has been on, this great move, finally took a breather on uh, Thursday and Friday. But overall, you see it went right up to 102. And what we said was when we looked way back over here, that 102 down to 96 was our range. And is it a coincidence that over here, we hit up here to 102. And all we tried two days, we fell back. And now be interested to see if we're back into this 102 to 96 dollar range. As we come to our education spotlight, uh, we're going to continue our conversation about trading rules. And trading rules are procedures established by the trader to help ensure that the trading system is executed consistently. Now we spend a lot of time talking about trading plans and trading systems. Um, a lot of time on trading plans and what we said was the trading rules are the actual day-to-day -day rules that you follow. The plan um, is your uh, overall business plan. It has all your numbers in it. It has your targets, your goals, your objectives. Your system are the strategies that you're going to implement and then your, your rules are your daily implementations of your trading system. So these procedures help ensure that you're following the system. They help ensure that you're trading the way that you have uh, designed to trade. Now again, we t we focus a lot about backtesting and documentation so that we can um, make sure that our system matches who we are as a trader and that more importantly that we can have a positive expectancy with our system. But our rules help us define when we're going to get in um, where we're going to pl place our stops, and more importantly, what are our, our money management strategies for getting out of the trade. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have a great free five-part video course on high probability trading. It helps frame the market. helps you know what you can include in your trading. But more importantly, we hope it gives you a gaze into who we are as coaches, how we can help you develop your, your trading plan, your trading system, and your trading rules. As coaches, uh, we have our video course that we're only charging $99 for. Um, again, it has everything you need from beginning for new traders, for experienced traders, takes you through the introduction of trading, technical knowledge, chart planning, money management, then how to go ahead and choose the right trading plan, the right trading system, how to put your components together, and then we go over specific setups as our rules. But again, we're not charging a lot because there are plenty of things that you can find out there for a lot more, but what we hope is that you'll get the information and come back as coach uh, mentees in our coaching program so that we can really help you, again, develop that trader's mindset to be successful. For Trading Forex, we have our futures brokers, and today margin low is $300, 20 free trades if you sign up through us. And as far as charter packages, we have that also works both on the PC and Mac so that you can find the latest moving stocks. In the end, it doesn't make a difference about your indicators, about your system. If you don't have the trader's mindset to pull the trigger, you can have the system, you can have the plan, you can have the rules, but you still have to enact. You still have to take action. And we can help you do that. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.